21. God damn it. Oh, I'll try it. 21. On Sunday evening, the course got interested. It got interesting when Alan Mendelssohn was taking his turn reading to me. He had just got through a long passage about how the custom of eating chopped liver is not an, of earthly origin, but was picked up from interplanetary travelers by the residents of Atlantis. I must say the book was past the point of being boring, and had become totally ridiculous. Mendelssohn and I had laughed so much that we couldn't laugh anymore. We just read on, reading the book because somehow we had made an unspoken pact to read our way through to the very end. Mendelssohn had gotten to the part about the chopped liver. Now he was into a section about of Lemurian prophecies. It seems the Lemurian wise men had predicted the Civil War, the airplane, the automobile, sliced bread, frisbees, and the Hong Kong flu. So what? Anybody can say he predicted anything. I could say that I predicted that men would go to the moon, unless I had some proof I had said it a long time before anybody went there, or looked like they'd go there, it wouldn't mean a thing. Then Alan Mendelssohn got to the interesting part. Also, he read, the Lemurian sages predicted that one day accounts of their deeds would be read by two boys named Alan Mendelssohn and Leonard Niebel. I thought he was just fooling around, making it up his surprised expression and sort of spluttering, pointing, poking at the book I took to be acting. Good acting, but not real. How could it be real? How could our names be in the book? Alan showed me. In the same smudgy little mimeograph typing, there there they were, our names. How was this possible? Was it some trick of Samuel Klagorsch? We didn't put anything past him, but how could he have done it? Samuel Kogarsh didn't know we were coming. We had run into him at the Bermuda Triangle Chili Parlor. He hadn't been out of our sight the whole time we'd been with him. In order to insert our names, he would have had to type the whole page on mimeographic stencil and then run it off and insert it in the book. Alan Mendelssohn had worked on the school newspaper in the Bronx and had used a mimeograph machine. He said that it would have taken at least 15 minutes. If Samuel Klugarsh was a fast typist in mimeograph, of course, if Samuel Klugarsh had known in some way that we would be coming back, he could have prepared the hyperstellar archaeology course with our names in it. But how could he know we'd be coming back in only a couple of days? And how could he know we'd want to trade in our Klugarsh mind control course and a megameter? What's more, neither of us could remember having told Samuel Klugarsh our names. He usually called us a gentleman. If, there's, if there was a trick in it somewhere, we couldn't figure it out. Of course, if it wasn't a trick, at least not a trick of Samuel Klugarsh, if it was a trick of the ancient Lemurian sages, then it put the whole book in a different light. It meant that all that stuff about the origins of eating chopped liver and packaged chocolate pudding being a de deadly explosive with one ingredient missing, and super intelligent tri chickens, it might all be true. We'd been making jokes and playing a dumb game with a book that might be true. Right after the book mentions our names, it went on to some totally unrelated, something totally unrelated, which seemed to be the style of the thing. It went on to talk about how rubber automobile tires are actually living beings and have feelings and memories and personalities. When they get flat, it means they're dead. We were confused. First, the book had gone on and on with all sorts of weird, unproven statements, one after another, with no rhyme or reason. Then it mentioned us both by name. Then it went back to strange little snippets of information. Yojimbo's Japanese dictionary was compiled by Clarence Yojimbo, a beloved Chinese scholar who was actually a beloved Venusian scholar in disguise. Since the Venusians live upwards of 3,000 years, Clarence Yojimbo had the opportunity to reside in both Lemuria in its golden age and much later in Japanese Jap Japan during the late Tokawa period. Yojimbo compiled a much-respected Japanese dictionary for the use of merchants doing business in Yokohama. What is singular about the dictionary is that when read backwards, noting only the second word in English in each entry, it is found to contain another book, a key to ancient Lemurian mind control methods, rediscovered briefly and then lost again by the Order of the Laughing Alligator, of which Yojimbo was a member. We got the Japanese dictionary out of the red manila folder. We turned to the last entry. Suzushi, impudent, audacious, bold, cheeky, saucy, unblushing, shameless, brazen-faced, lost to a sense of shame. So the second word in the English was audacious. The next to the last entry of the dictionary was Suzuki, meaning pushing one's opponent on the chest with one's head. A second word in the in English part was ones. 
but it was misprinted with no apostrophe. So far we had audacious ones. We went to the page, writing down the second English word in each entry. Soon it began to make a sentence, then two. Audacious, audac audacious ones push straight to the center in order to advance mental power, show caution and courage, daring and patience. It made sense. We didn't understand it, but it made sense. We read on. Alan Mendelssohn read aloud, reading the second word in the English from each entry, going from back of the book to the front. It made sentences all right, but they were very hard to understand. Obscure, Alan Mendelssohn said. A short song, effortless. A single monorail charged with coal syrup. The metal worker's steel prospects imparts a candid lump of airy worthiness to, to the short dandelion. Mark a post... Mark... Mark a post and object with wood screws of tacit approval. Aim silent mental wooden drums at Buddhist temple. Win, lose by ten crosses. Profit net proceeds of one thousand yen. Turn a book upside down. Most of the sentences seemed to be saying something, but we couldn't figure out what. Sometimes it was a little bit easier. To send thoughts mentally without speaking directly by special means, telegraphically, radio telegra telegraphy is the best use, is best to use made of metal, an antenna, a fence, a gate, a sword, a thing, a thing, silver, copper, steel, to receive same similar procedure good. That seemed to us to be fairly, fairly clear. It was saying that to send or receive thoughts like radio waves, you needed an antenna. We went through the dictionary slowly, backwards, writing down a word at a time and puzzling over the groups of words, trying to see them as sentences. It was slow work. We hadn't covered very much the dictionary by the time Alan's mother called on the telephone and said it was time for him to come home. It said he, for him to come home at once, actually. Alan asked me if I'd mind if he took the dictionary home with him. He said he would stay up late and copy out some more stuff and maybe recopy the parts with that made sense into a notebook. I told him to go ahead. We talk about it more in school the next day.